In this video, I'm going to be building the best possible team for 1 million MT in NBA 2K23. My team, after the new out of position drop, a lot of the point guards have been dropping a lot in price, and you guys can build a really, really good team for 1 million MT. Like, honestly, you can build a very capable squad of going into unlimited and having a lot of success with it. So, at the starting point guard position, we're starting it off hot with, in my opinion, the new best point guard in the game, the Galley Sample Sangu. Now, I know not, I know not everybody's going to agree with that, that he is the best point guard, but in my opinion, I still think for 175,000 MT on average, maybe goes for a little bit more, maybe a little bit less when you guys are watching this, but I still think for that price price tag, as long as you think he's like a top three point guard, that's when he becomes super good value. He's a six foot 10 point guard with a seven foot two wingspan and has such elite defense in my team right now, a 95 block, 93 interior defense, 90 steel, 91 perimeter. Like they souped out this Sangoon card stats and badges wise. He's got Hall of Fame, Clamp Breaker, Quick First Step, Unpluckable on a six foot 10 point guard but that's not the craziest thing about this card they gave him the trey young escape which is easily the best escape in the game he's also got like the kyle lowry size up damian lillard behind the back mj dribble style he's got the sangoon release on very quick which is a very capable jump shot not like the best release in the game but if you use this card correctly and you're literally just you know posting up with him using him in the pick and roll and then greeting wide open he is easily the best point guard in the game at least in my opinion but you need to pair him up with a really good offensive too and for this squad the perfect guy to pair him with is the galaxy of vince carter obviously if you guys have a t-mac or that type of card then obviously you want to use t-mac but the next best option or like a ray allen but the next best option is going to be vince carter in my opinion who i think is a really good offensive shooting guard and is going to pair nicely with that sangoon card at point guard he's going to be a six foot six shooting guard with a six foot nine wingspan and like i said he's just here for offense to be able to score the ball at a very high level he's got a 98 driving dunk 98 vertical also having 97 speed 97 acceleration so a super quick card and then we all know he's got the Kyle Kuzma base he's got a great jump shot on quick timing and then does have some pretty elite dribble sigs so I don't want to spend too much time talking about Vince Carter because you guys know by now and Vince is going to be a really good shooting guard for about 100,000 MT. I think he's like 110, 120,000 MT at most. And then for the starting small four position, we're going to be going for still one of the best lockdowns in the game. And that is going to be the Galaxable Isaac. Now he has probably dropped a little bit on like the top, you know, 10, top five small forward list, just because we got the two new free opals and Danny Ferry and the Purvis, uh, Purvis, I don't know what his last name is, but those two small forwards are probably better all around than Jonathan Isaac. But if we're talking about straight up defense, that's when Isaac is still one of the best defenders in the game. Him and that new uh, Dark Matter Bill Russell. He's going to be a power forward, small forward, six foot 11 with a seven foot two wingspan and still has such elite defensive stats with a 98 block, 95 steel, 97 lateral quickness, 95 perimeter, and a 95 interior defense. Tons and tons of good Hall of Fame defensive badges like Anchor, Challenger, Chase on Artist, Clamps, Glove, Interceptor, menace workhorse i mean he's just such a good defender and then does have a very solid jump shot and can green wide open so i feel like this one two three combo is going to be super nice with sangoon vince carter and then jonathan isaac and you can find isaac for about 60 to 70 000 mt somewhere in the price range and then now guys talking about what i believe is the most glitchy card in the game pretty much next to Yao Ming and that is going to be the pink diamond taco fall who is super overpriced for a pink diamond card but the tier rating or the tier rarity doesn't matter at all just because he's a pink diamond like I've seen a lot of people on Twitter saying oh why are people paying 400,000 MT for a pink diamond it's because it is goddamn taco fall and he is damn near like a top two top three power forward in the game I mean he's seven foot six with an eight foot two wingspan at the power forward position now you're probably saying okay well he's got a 33 ball he can't shoot three all he can do is mash they gave this man a 73 three ball 84 mid range and he can hold every shooting badge in the game which means you can give him catch and shoot you can give him limitless range green machine you know guard up all of these amazing shooting badges in the game the one flaw with this card is actually the speed only having 64 speed and 64 acceleration but if you guys are running monty williams for example now he has a 69 speed and then you give him a plus four speed boost he's gonna have 73 speed and that is perfectly fine for your guy who's going to be guarding the center because I'll show you what to do with the matchups, right? Because I'm not running an actual center alongside Taco. He is basically going to be playing our center position. He's going to have 73 speed for a card who's seven foot six, obviously going to be probably the best defender in the game, at least, you know, for the interior, him and Yao Ming, because they're just both giants. And we all know Taco has a better player model, at least in my opinion, than a guy like Yao Ming because he's, he looks taller in game than Yao. And he also looks like he has a wider player build and he also has that wingspan of 
advantage uh, advantage as well. So I feel like I was going to go with Dark Matter D-Rob, but I think Taco is the smarter decision because he's a little bit cheaper than Dark Matter D-Rob. He goes for about 375 to 400,000 MT, and he might honestly drop over time. He might also go up depending on the market and what people, you know, expect from Taco and want the, what the market wants to pay for him. But right now he's about 400,000 MT, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. And then for a center who is basically going to be our power forward in game, and that's going to be the Galaxy Global Jokic, who I feel like is going to be like the perfect power forward to pair alongside Taco to give us a little bit more shooting and a little bit more spacing of the floor. I feel like he's going to be a really good power forward for only about 90,000 MT. So yeah, in game, obviously you start Taco with the four and, yeah, and then uh, Jokic at the five, but then in game, you just switch Taco fall matchups wise onto their center and then Jokic onto their power forward and you're perfectly fine. You could also put Jokic on their small forward if they have like a lockdown guy and you want to put Isaac on their power forward. There's a lot of different matchups you can do. You could also put Sangoon on their power forward, right? And then maybe like, so yeah, that's probably the better thing is putting Jonathan Isaac on ball putting Sangoon on their power forward and then putting Jokic on their small forward that's probably what I'd recommend doing or put Sangoon on their you know maybe second best defender because your weakest defender which is not actually that weak is either Vince Carter or Nikola Jokic so my opinion going to be a very good starting lineup you know with that Taco Fall card and then off the bench we do have to go a little bit more budget but you can still build a really good backcourt and just overall a really good team even with like going a little bit more budget I mean for the backup two we do have this pink diamond Luke Walton card or for the backup one I should say which is going to be a shooting guard point guard card six foot eight luke walton can play point guard has great all-around stats i think he's probably maybe a top five point guard in the game top seven i would say for sure he's got a pretty good jump shot with the marco Fultz base was also the runner test base who's so got a great jump shot on quick timing and also has some amazing dribble sigs i know some people are gassing him and saying he's like a top three point guard in the game i don't know if i go that crazy but honestly you can make an argument he is a top three top five point guard in the game and for only about forty thousand mt that is going to be extremely good value and then for the backup too like i said we got to go a little bit budget so we do have to pick up the uh, pink diamond cam reddish you guys know what he can do by now he's just going to be another really tall player in game a six foot eight shooting guard with a seven foot wingspan we're going to be building a really tall bench and just overall that's what really matters in my team right now whether you like it or not height matters so much right now so having a six foot eight shooting guard is going to really help for matchups wise because at the back of three we are going to be going for a really good offensive small four because we do need some more offense off the bench and that is going to be Rudy Gay. But now that I think about it, I think MPJ might actually be the smarter play because he's going to be a little bit better offensively than a guy like Rudy and he's a bit taller as well. So you guys can decide between Rudy Gay or MPJ who you guys want to go with. For this squad, I'll just leave Rudy Gay in there for now because he is still such a uh, such a good offensive and just room running small forward in the game. He's only six foot eight, but I feel like having Cam Reddish and Luke Walton beside him, they'll be perfectly fine in the one, two, three. He's going to be a six foot eight small forward though with a seven foot three wingspan. Very good at going to the basket with a 97 driving dunk, 95 vertical. Obviously can finish around the rim very well, you know, with his uh, finishing badges. Jump shot wise, I feel like he's still got one of the better releases in the game at least like his base and his upper uh, upper on combination wise i still feel like is a great jump shot six wise I mean, he's got solid six, nothing crazy for your small four, but for only about 40,000 MT, maybe even a little bit cheaper now, is going to be a very good small forward. And then for the backup four and five, I wasn't like 100% sure what to do because there's not really too many like budget beasts at the power forward and the center position. I mean, Dino is still a very good power forward card and he'll be able to compete with like most power forwards in the game. You know, those guys like the Dark Matter D-Rob, you know, those really tall power forwards because he's got an eight foot wingspan and is a very solid defender. So for the backup four, for about 25 to 30,000, MT. I think Dino is going to be a really good option. And then to round off the squad, I feel like we still got to go for Pink Diamond D-Rob, who, like I said, we need to go a little bit more budget, and he's still going to be a very good center, especially alongside Dino, you know, with Rudy Gay, Cam Reddish, and Luke Walton. So I feel like this team is super well balanced. We have really good offense. We have amazing defense. We're super tall. We're definitely not undersized at any position, really. I mean, if you look at every position in the game, we have like a very tall player except for maybe i guess a six foot six shooting guard but he's paired next to a six foot ten point guard a six foot eleven small forward and a seven foot six cent or seven foot six power forward who will play our center position so in my opinion guys this is the best possible team you guys can build for one million mt i think it's a really good squad that you guys can take into unlimited and you should have no problems because you also got taco fall who can match up against other people's yao mings or other tacos so you don't want i feel like at this point in my team you need to have a taco fall on your team just in case you you match up against a taco and a yao or you match up against one of those but let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about the squad i built and hopefully you guys did enjoy and the video did help you guys out and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace